Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian with Superman's Comics. We took a week off, but we are back this week with a new episode of The Hot and Cold Show. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on, buddy? Oh, happy to be here, Brian. You know, we like you said, we missed a week, but we are happy to be back. And uh, we are just coming back from Baltimore Comic Con. It was good to hang out with you in person, buddy. Yes. First time Jack and I ever met was this past weekend. And not only that, but we met a lot of great other YouTubers. Shout out to Comic Core. Shout out to everyone that participates in Comic Core. That's a long list. They are like the Wu Tang of comic book YouTube channels. Everyone's got their own channel, but they come together to form the Comic Core. Great group of guys. Awesome to meet them. In fact, I spent more time talking to people than I actually did digging. But that's for another time. We have a great show for you tonight. It is also important to let you guys know this show is brought to you by CBSI Swag. CBSISwag.com. Perfect place to find all those t-shirts, hats, hoodies, beanies, anything you possibly can. And remember, code word HOTCOLD10 gets you 10% off on the site. But enough about that. Let's get what everyone's here for with the latest hot and cold list. Kicking off the hot list this week, we have Adam from Strange Tales to Collect YouTube channel. Let's see what he has for us with his hot pick this week. Hey everyone, Adam here with Strange Tales to Collect and I'd like to bring you my hot picks for this week. Uh, my hot pick for this week is Fantastic Four speculation. So uh, we know we got Fantastic Four coming to the MCU. Um, it's been announced, it's official. Um, prices are starting to go up now. When it's come to um, a lot of Fantastic Four books, you know, with your first appearance of Black Panther, uh, first appearance of the Cocoon of Adam Warlock, you know, your first appearance of Galactus, um, Namor, Silver Surfer, uh, the team, Doctor Doom. There's a lot of good uh, early um, Silver Age and uh, books to go ahead and get on. Um, now, I know um, with the heat that's been coming along with these, prices have continually um, rose. And they were already pretty um, pretty high to begin with, guys, now. And, and now they're starting to reach those untouchable marks. But if you can get a ha your hands on a Fantastic Four 1, a Fantastic Four 5, a number 4, um, you know, uh, all those things like that. Um, there's And like I said, there's a ton of them, 48, 49, 50, all those. Um, for, you know, your first appearance of Inhumans. And there's a lot, a lot of good keys to pick up in the Fantastic Four collection, guys, that aren't necessarily... Four, Fantastic Four, but because they're in that series, you know, the Fantastic Four was a really, really big series for Marvel, um, and it has been over the years, and they've, they've brought a lot of content through that series itself. Um, so if you can, go ahead, uh, before prices continue to go up, before we start seeing trailers and getting casting announcements and all that stuff, if you can get one of these key books, now is the time to do it. Even though it's hot, people are looking for them, people are buying them. I don't see prices slowing down. I don't see prices falling anytime soon. In fact, I can I think they're going to continue to rise. And then when you see them officially come to the MCU is when, if you thought they were untouchable now, they're going to be really, really high-end um, collectibles. And the good thing about you, me, probably most people in the hobby is we can't afford a super high-grade copy of these earlier Fantastic Four books. Um, so mid-grade sells really well. Low grade even sells really well. So if you can get your hands on a, you know, a 0.5, a 1.8, a 3.5, you know, don't be afraid to go ahead and buy those because those prices have all gone up as well. Now, the earlier uh, it is, the lower grade you can get, the more money you're going to be able to get for it later. When you start getting to that 48, 49, 50 mark and beyond, um, you know, try to get those mid grades. Uh, the prices are pretty good. And people search after those mid grades because they look great slabbed. The books look great, but they're more affordable and they're going to move pretty quick. So, my hot pick, Fantastic Four spec. So Adam's talking Fantastic Four spec. I actually like this pick, especially since that Disney Fox deal. Everyone's chomping at the bit to get Fantastic Four into the MCU and get the Fantastic Four movie that everyone kind of deserves. I kind of like the first one, not the second one. And then the third one that they just did a couple years ago is definitely booty. But we're going to get them in the MCU. The good thing I think is... I don't think it's at least like a phase off because they got to get everything together. They already have the, the docket lined up for the next phase. But either way, he mentioned a lot of great books there. They are hot right now. I think he had a good point about once they are announced in a movie or say you get Galactus or Doctor Doom as a big bad, those books are going to go through the stratosphere. But what do you think, Jack? 
Well, yeah, you mentioned earlier the Comic Core, my man Legend from the Comic Core. I know he's a huge Fantastic Four fan, and he's been advocating the new series, and I, I've actually checked it out, and it's a good series. And they've introduced some new characters within that series, and we don't know when the Fantastic Four hits the, the big screen, if we're going to be looking at a lot of classic stuff, or if they're going to mine from the more modern comics, as some of the other properties in the MCU have done. But either way, I really like this pick from Adam, uh, the guy I like to call Handsome Adam. Um, and, you know, he mentioned Fantastic Four 45 and 46. I love those picks. Brian, you were in Baltimore with me. You know that was something I was talking about this weekend. Can't say why I like those picks, but I like those picks. And then another Fantastic Four book that I constantly am digging for is Fantastic Four 204 and 205. That's the first appearance, cameo, first full of the Nova Corps. And we know that, like, Nova is coming eventually. We know that we've already seen the Nova Corps in the movies. But I think once Nova himself, uh, whether it's Richard Ryder or Sam Alexander, or whatever version they decide to go with, uh, the Nova Corps will become a more prevalent force in the MCU. And those books will rise to prominence. They are dirt cheap right now and easily found in back issue bins and boxes. So be on the lookout for those for sure. Yeah, I picked those books up right when guardians the first guardians movie was in production because once they mentioned nova core they didn't really take off like i thought but who nah. knows i got them in my i got them in a long box just in case so thanks adam for that pick and we'll roll right into the next pick from simple man's comics patreon member simon who also has his own fantastic podcast let's check out his pick hi guys name's simon from short book sharks here in london england I want to thank you for um, asking for my hot pick this week, Simple Man's Comics, um, aka Mr. Bolo. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to sharing what I think um, my hot pick at the moment is. So, I'm a really, really big Spider Man fan, um, and I love all things Spidey. But I've noticed that recently, um, particularly over here, I don't know if it's the same in the States, um, but there's been a real buzz around like 90s Spider Man titles, particularly some of the stuff like this uh, the, the Cosmic Carnage issues. Um, which have seen some quite decent sales on eBay. They've gone, I mean, when I got these, they were about 30 quid. Now I'm seeing sets of them go for 70, 75 quid. Um, obviously there's a renewed interest in The Silver Surfer with the new title by Donny Cates um, and all of the cosmic stuff that's happening. So those two, those two books seem pretty hot, but anything Carnage really is kind of, is blowing up at the moment. I mean, we've got the Maximum Carnage title, so all, the, all of these types of issues that people are loving the covers. It's a decent story. We've got the, the Spider-Man Unlimited, obviously the first Shriek, which has been announced for the Venom 2 film. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think anything kind of 90s Spider-Man at the moment that's got a bit of carnage, a bit of Venom, or anyone like that, and it seems to be blowing up. Um, one particular sale I saw the other day for Spider-Man Unlimited 1 in this country was uh, for £45 for um, a near mint copy, which considering about three months ago, you could pick up a near mint copy for about eight quid. is quite a spike from the movie news. So, an exciting time to be a Spider-Man fan, particularly if you like your 90s comics like I do. Um, so yeah, that's my hot pick for this week. Any, any 90s Spider-Man with a bit of carnage. Thanks guys. So there we have Simon, Short Box Sharks podcast. Make sure you guys check it out. And, I don't know if you picked up on it, but he ain't from around these parts. He's from across the pond. And I love this pick because it also not only gives general common market but you're also seeing the market from over there where he's from over there near london but 90 spider-man what do you think jack yeah i like this pick it's kind of unique it's not one i would have really thought about but as you know he was kind of going on the more you really think about it the more it's true like a lot of these hot spider-man issues whether from amazing spider-man or from some of the offshoot series is, are coming from the 90s which i love because that's my era of spider-man um and a lot of it has to do with venom and carnage for sure i think that's kind of the the mode that we're in right now with absolute carnage and with donny cates's venom run um even think thinking about like asm 347 with venom island as we lead into that storyline next in the venom series but also some of the, these books that he mentioned, like the the Cosmic Carnage book, that was during a period where ASM was really lower printed than it is, you know, currently, and that it was previously. So those are tougher to find books and tougher to find books in good condition. And I think that has a lot to do with it. But even so, you look at the book like Spider Man Unlimited, you're talking about a book that is plentiful, but still seeing major major spikes. So. 
whenever Spider-Man gets hot, there's kind of no limit to what can happen. And, uh, you know, I think we and I have talked about this, Brian, that, you know, the, the discussion about books being overprinted is kind of an overdone discussion because I think we're in a market right now that is so bullish on buying key books that there's no such thing as overprinted anymore. I think the market will buy up whatever is hot as, as quickly as they possibly can. Right. And I also like how he mentioned about seeing those go as sets, which we talk about a lot on this show, which... I have a feeling we're going to be talking about a lot more on this channel at some point. Yeah, definitely. People should be on the lookout for that coming very soon. So thanks, Simon, for that pick. And speaking of 90s, we're getting right into the next hot pick, which comes from Comic Man Andy. What's up, Simpleman Comics family? The Bearded Wonder, Comic Man Andy back. Brian, Jack, thanks for having me. Here to bring you guys a hot pick this week. And uh, my hot pick this week is 90s gimmicky comic book covers. Uh, bear with me here, a little broad. Just think um, wraparound chromium covers and their gorgeous splendor. Just think the foil comic book covers. God, gorgeous red foil. Um, and think of the just lewd amounts of chrome in some of the books that we saw in the 90s and uh whether it's speculation because there's some first appearances some books or first appearances in some books and uh the fact that they're not making them anymore um that's my hot pick uh i don't pass these up when i'm digging through dollar bins and five dollar bins i grab them and better uh, the higher grade they are the better the newsstands that's even better too um and the other part of it for me in my heart, it's nostalgia. Those of us that grew up with these books in the late eighties and then the early nineties. And then when it got really crazy in the mid nineties, um, we want to sometimes relive that experience of buying those covers again, owning those covers, um, flipping through them and rereading them. We really have a place in our hearts for them. Some people don't like them. I think the better part of the community really does like them a lot. And me for one, I don't pass them up when I see them in bins. And why do I think this is really catching on steam and getting to become a hot pick? It's because the people that create comic books aren't stupid, and they pay attention to this stuff that happens. Um, they got brand new books coming out that have full foil covers on them now. And they started doing this, you know, this isn't recent. They've been doing it for the last um, little while. That's like 2018. There was a lot of stuff from DC with foil covers. They're gorgeous. Um, and just recently, not too long ago, Bloodshot number 1, one in 250 carbon fiber variant. Did they just seriously make a comic book with a cover, entire cover made out of co carbon fiber? That sounds like something straight out of the 90s if they had the technology to do it back then. And, you know, even the die cut covers um, were a lot of fun. And uh, think uh, the ferret from Malibu, and that whole book was die cut. I want one in a 9.8 CGC slab for the fun of it. And I remember that book, and I remember flipping through reading it, and how ridiculous it was to be cut all the way around it's i have memories with that book so that's my hot pick for the week guys what am i gonna do i'm gonna go pickies out go peace out catch you guys on the flip side for the cold picks <laughs> andy flashing light in our eyes they're moving those books around <laughs> like a lighthouse on the sea over there but one thing i will point out and he gave us that hot pick behind him in the middle he had a Punisher Award Journal 9.8. That book's no longer up there right now because he replaced it with a new book. I want you guys, when you get a chance, go check out Count Man Andy's channel. He's got a video up there. Heck of a grail that he picked up at Baltimore Comic Con. But also, 90s gimmicks. We've talked about this. We talked about, even about it even in the hotel at Baltimore. You're seeing it. The trends are coming back around. But what do you think, Jack? Yeah, I actually I had this discussion with Andy um, at a... Uh local Kool-Aid selling establishment um, as well. He was very excited about this trend. And I got to tell you, I, it's something that I, I definitely agree with. Um, we talked about it in the hotel later on. Um, and I'm glad to see this be his pick uh, on the episode. It, it really is true. First off, I come from like the fashion and sneaker industry and everything comes back around. So like these 90s style hats that were in the you know early 2000s, were called dad hats because you know only dorky dads would wear them and then now they come back in the style 
Um, and that's kind of how everything goes, right? So these 90s foil books that were considered like gaudy and overdone are now suddenly being like re redone by the publishers of today. Um, and fans who are nostalgic for that old kind of like collectible that we all like chased as kids. Cause let's be honest when you're a kid, the shiny book gets your attention, right? It's kind of that easy. Um, we're grabbing them up and then the newer audience, they're loving them as well. Um, another tip is a lot of times you'll be at conventions or at like sales at your LCS, right? And they're doing like long box sales, you know, long box for 50 bucks or even a hundred bucks is a good deal. Um, and you're picking up books for 15 cents or so. I grab every cover that's shiny and foil at that kind of price because they sell for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. You'll get money for them because collectors like them. Um, whether it's you know the Hulk covers or Fantastic Four has some, uh, Ghost Rider has some. They come back around, and we saw that with like the Ghost Rider Glow in the Dark variant from NYCC, um, kind of reignited. Ghost Rider 15 and 16, those glow-in-the-dark covers. So it's amazing how this is happening. Um, the 90s is kind of back in style and in fashion, not just in the clothing that we wear, but also in the comic books that we buy. Right. So I'm sure we're going to see cross colors come back soon. <laughs> Anything is possible, my man. <laughs> Great pick, Andy. We're going to roll right into the next hot pick, which comes from CoverTunes author on comicbookinvest.com, Mike Morello. How's it going, everybody? Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with my hot pick this week. And this week's is pretty obvious. Um, amidst a possible announcement of an HBO Max show for Monstrous, Monstrous has popped again. Um, now, there are only 24 issues of this thing. It is one of the most beautiful comics interior-wise that I've ever seen. Um, how Takata does it, I haven't the slightest idea, but it's amazing stuff. Um, the story's been fantastic. If it comes to HBO, it is going to be one hell of an expensive endeavor. But um, if they do it right, man, it could be amazing. Um, number ones are popping back up to 50, 60 bucks a piece for the first print. The second print is the one you really want. That's the new art, uh, and that's a pretty scarce print run. And that is um, hitting about 100 bucks raw right now. Um, and a lot more if they're nine eights. And the third print isn't one to sleep on either. Uh, that's also pretty rare. It is the same cover art as the second printing, but it is colored differently. It's blue rather than yellow. Um, and it is about a $30, $35 book right now. Of course, other issues are doing really well. Also, number two is doing pretty well. Um, and there's a couple of other issues that have first appearances in them. I think nine and 11 are pretty decent sellers. Um, and then, of course, uh, the number 24 just came out a couple of months ago. So um, you could do well to pick up the entire run, or at least the first 12. Um, the trades are broken up into six issue arcs, so to speak, but it's really just all one arc. It's a pretty awesome story. I hope it really does come to HBO. And um, right now is a time for you to maybe flip some of these if you were holding a bunch of them. Um, now you might actually get some return on that investment. Um, for me, I'm going to hold them just because I love the comic and I think it's got some real legs. I think the show's going to be great if there is one. So that's my hot pick for the week. Thanks, everybody. So we're talking Monstrous. Not long ago, there was a circulation going around that Monstrous got picked up for HBO Max. News has since, I don't think it's been confirmed, but either way, I still love this pick. We had Monstrous as a cold pick. I think either way, optioned or not, show or not, this is one of those books, whether it's hot, cold, if you can find it cheap, especially in 9 8 I pick them up. Yeah, I agree. I think the key to what you said there, Brian, is if you can find it cheap. If you're buying it on the way up the ladder, banking on this HBO Max series, I would be very careful because um, we've heard some news, and I'm not an expert on the subject, uh, but of uh, like the site that initially posted the article taking down the information, um, there's been a failure kind of to confirm the information. It's tough. A lot of people have reported on it. I know um, Key Collector has reported on it. ComicBookInvest.com has reported on it. Um, and then every other speculation site from comicsheatingup.net to comicspeculation.com, uh, so on and so forth. But we have yet to see like Variety or Deadline or, um, you know, the Hollywood Reporter or anybody like that 
really confirm this. It's really kind of stayed within the comic book community. And I, I think we may have a situation of kind of like wishful thinking and people jumping the gun on this. Um, and either way, I think the f- fact that these books heated up so much shows you like the fervor for Monstrous and the fact that there's serious reader buzz behind this. People have been waiting for this for a long, long time. So even if the books drop back down um, because maybe this wasn't the announcement everybody thought it was going to be, it gives an opportunity to then buy at that point because now you see what could happen if this comes into play. And then if it does come into play either way, I think people you're going to see these books only continue to grow because this is a series that has like some die-hard fans. I don't want to make the Saga comparison because that's dangerous, right? Because like Saga fans are probably the most die-hard Image fans there is. But it's in that kind of ballpark. Right. And whether confirmed or not, no doubt the book is hot. They've been selling like crazy. It's a great pick from Mike. We're going into the next hot pick, which comes from Dollar Ben Digging, author and comic book invest.com, Peter Renna. What's going on, everybody? So, for my hot pick this week, I'm going to go with something a little bit different and actually uh, pick a character. And uh, with last week's announcements of the X-Books that are coming on the way, uh, it was announced that Wolverine would finally be getting a new ongoing once again. It's been years since we've had a Wolverine ongoing. We've been stuck with all these nonsense, useless miniseries of Madripoor and glowing claws and heat claws and returns and all that nonsense it's nice to finally have just a regular wolverine title coming back to us and uh so the last week or so a lot of wolverine books have been uh, selling pretty uh, solid as a result uh you know og wolverine number one here i mean this is now a you know 40 to 100 dollar raw book uh these days uh the whole set here selling you know anywhere from about 100 to 140 and uh, nine eighths of number one, you know, might run you about three hundred dollars. Uh, those are moving pretty steady. Uh, also, is ongoing. You know, number one's another book that's moving pretty good. I know you've seen it on uh, somebody else's hot ten list, and they're not wrong. This book is selling pretty good. That's you know, a nine eighths, one sixty to two hundred bucks. Raw is twenty five to fifty bucks. Uh, and it's not just you know the Wolverine number ones. It's some of his other my you know, key books like Uncanny X Men one thirty three, which you know. Famously has his uh, best there is of what he does little line there. That one little panel they actually uh, use for an homage for an X-23 uh, cover, I think, from San Diego just uh, last year or so. But uh, this is a good book, too, you know, to have. 9-8 just sold this past week for over 450 bucks. Uh, Raw, that's a $50 book now. Uh, Hulk 340 is another one that uh, eh, everybody wants to own, and they should. I mean, this is just classic cover right here. McFarland is just pure awesomeness. That 9.8 is also 350 to 400 dollars these days, and uh, 30 to 85 bucks raw, uh, depending on the grade and what you can find. I mean, personally, I suggest you know, if you can get any of those books, just get them, like, whatever grade they are. Just get what you can afford. It's just they're good books to have. They're just books you should have in your PC. And uh, Wolverine's coming back finally. We'll get Logan back, hopefully. In a point, you know, of what we all expect. Not some, you know, nonsense with glowing claws, nothing silly. Just give me old school, hard-ass Logan. But, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm holding out hope. Hickman's uh, turned around the rest of the X-Books. So, uh, there you go. Here's Wolverine, man. Wolverine, to me, he's one of those characters that's hot one minute, cold the next. But it does seem like he's kind of warm up again. Because he comes and goes from the Marvel Universe, right? It got hot again, especially with that podcast. If you haven't listened to that audio podcast, that audio show they had out there for Wolverine, I definitely recommend listening to that. But Jack, Wolverine, what do you say? Well, I think the key with Wolverine is age demographic. So like if you're my age, your age, Peter's age, um, what we grew up with Wolverine being like a major, major big deal, right? But you got to look at like the younger community right now. In the last decade, Wolverine has not been for them what it was for us so it wasn't a necessity as like peter was talking about to own those books for that community um for us those were some of maybe the first keys we were grabbing up was like wolverine for myself at least when i got into comic collecting um for a second time the first thing i was going back and doing is getting wolverine number one uh, you know hulk 340 those were like absolute must-haves um but Like you said, with the MCU, the fact that, like, Wolverine was in these, like, bad Fox movies, 
um, as good as Hugh Jackman played that character. Uh, it that didn't necessarily help. There's never been a Wolverine series in like the last you know five to ten years that has really had major reader buzz behind it. And I think that's had a lot to do with it. And then they killed Wolverine off, right? So the death of Wolverine was also one of those series that was looked at as like a large cash grab. So it, it wasn't um, it wasn't an immensely popular miniseries the way, say, Absolute Carnage is right now. And we all knew he'd be back, right? So he's back. He's coming to the MCU. Um, there's a new a new series coming that allows maybe the newer comic collecting community crowd to get in. Um, and I think a lot of this is also movie driven. We see Hulk 180 and Hulk 181 going through the roof, constantly setting record prices. Um, and, and those books are unattainable to a lot of people. So I think that also that's part of it is that you're seeing those maybe who cannot play that Hulk 180, Hulk 181 game going to the next best thing. And that's where these Wolverine number ones are doing exceptionally well right now. Um, anything classic Wolverine is doing well. Uh, and that's a good trend. I mean, you talk about a blue chip character in comic book collecting. So it's good to see Wolverine kind of coming back into prominence. But I agree with you. Uh, I think it, it ebbs and flows with Wolverine. Right. So we're going to keep going. And the last pick on our hot list this week comes from Carolina Chris26. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's your boy Carolina Chris. Two, six, back at you again this week with my hot pick on Simple Man's Comics Hot and Cold Show. Now, obviously, last week we didn't have a hot and cold show because Jack and Brian were enjoying themselves at Baltimore Comic Con. Could you blame them? I mean, I would have killed to have went to Baltimore Comic Con. I actually got to go last year, and it was one of my first and only years going, and it's one of the biggest cons I've ever been to. I mean, they have a lot of big-name writers, a lot of big-name artists, a lot of big-name publishers. A lot of big cosplayers, a lot of comics, and you got the guy out front that sells water. He goes, ice cold water, it's only one dollar. If you've been to Baltimore Comic Con, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I did get to go to a con nevertheless, right here in my own town of Fayetteville, North Carolina, not even 15 minutes from where I live at, the Fayetteville Comic Con. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, and I will be posting a video this week of my entire Fayetteville Comic Con haul here, and it is a nice haul. I did pretty good, guys. You know, it's, it kind of feels good to go to a con just specifically looking for books instead of standing in lines to get signatures and then standing in line at the CGC booth, you know what I mean? But guys, these aren't the books I want to talk about this week. This is the book I want to talk about this week. Spider-Man Unlimited 1. All right, this is the first appearance of Shriek. Uh, Shriek has been confirmed to appear in the Venom sequel. Um, and Shriek is a mutant ally of Carnage, and I'm pretty sure all you know that. Also, guys, Spider-Man 1 Unlimited begins the 14-part series to Maximum Carnage. Now, I did not get to pick up the rest of the Maximum Carnage issues to the run. i seen copies at the con, but they were in such bad shape. I don't know. I, I was picky at this con. A lot of these books I picked up, they're in, they're in very fine, near-mint condition. I didn't pick up no books that were very good or fine condition. I was real picky about the books I picked up. I passed on a lot of books. Because they were they were damaged, you know what I mean? And I found a Young Avengers one, a couple of them, but they was all damaged. And then one was so high, I was like, eh, never mind. Uh, I actually found one on eBay for 50, uh, 58 bucks or something. I think it's probably the best deal I'm going to find. But guys, I did pick up two copies. And these copies, if I had them graded right now, they would come back in the high nines. I paid $4 for this one, and I paid 10 bucks for this one. But my LCS had a booth set up in the con, uh, Angry Comics, and he um, he had one for 25 bucks, and it was a 9.8 for sure, no doubt about it. Um, but he wanted $25 for it. That, that ain't that bad, but I wanted to walk around and look, and then I was going to come back, and I'm pretty sure he would have sold it to me for 20 you know what I mean? And when I came back on Sunday, he would already sold it. He had some of the best quality books in the whole con. But, guys, yeah, I did pick up two copies. Now, it's also been rumored that Naomi Harris is in talks to play the role, or she's been picked to play the role. I'm not 100% sure. But Naomi Harris, if you're not sure of her, she played in Rampage with uh, The Rock. 
she played in 28, uh, 28 Days Later, that's right, um, the 007 movie Skyfall, uh, Ninja Assassin, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, she played a couple 007 movies, but, um, yeah, Naomi Harris was in talks to play the role of Shriek. Now, I don't know if she's been confirmed as the actress that will play it. If she has, let me know. But, yeah, guys. Spider-Man Unlimited, number one. First appearance of Shriek. Venom 2. Now, you can find books, copies of this on eBay, but to find a near-mint 9.8 copy, you're going to pay more than 20 bucks. And if you get one less than 20 bucks, find yourself lucky. But just think about it. Not long ago, you could have found these in the dollar bin. You know what I mean? Not no more. All right, guys, it's my hot pick of the week, Spider-Man 1 Unlimited. Jack, Brian, take it away. So while we were in Baltimore, sounds like Chris had a good time and some good pickups and North Carolina at a con himself. But his pick, we're talking about the character Shriek. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, you know, this is a character we talked about during the Bolo show, right, when we were talking about Absolute Carnage and Shriek becoming Demi Demogoblin. Um, that kind of like uh, secret variant, the design variant that got hot for a period of time for Absolute Carnage number one, when everyone was trying to speculate who is that. And now we're talking about some serious like movie spec, which of course drives books more than anything. So there was already kind of a little primer, and now we got a full blown explosion on these books. Spider Man Unlimited One is a book that like people like you and I, Brian, who have been in this game for a while i kick myself because that was a dollar bin book all day a couple of years ago um and it's a book that i always said you know i need to grab just for the maximum carnage run because the reality is absolute carnage being what it is it's the follow-up to to maximum carnage and you know maximum carnage seems like a, a real likely story for a venom movie and a kind of inception with carnage coming in um and it seems like that's the route that they're gonna go uh, I think mean, people were mixed on the Tom Hardy Venom. I enjoyed it. It's not the Venom I grew up with, but it was an enjoyable movie, a fun movie. And uh, it built on something. And I have a lot of faith in Woody Harrelson as Carnage and Cletus Cassidy. So, you know, I, I think that this is a good play. Uh, I think that these books are going to continue to get hot and continue to be popular. I really don't know what to expect as far as, like, the ceiling on it because they're going pretty high. Uh, both Simon now and Chris have talked about some of the pricing on these books and uh you know it's it's incredible considering like i said it was a dollar bin book but with the movie appearance we may see these books continue to rise time will tell but you know if, if you bought them at the dollar bins you certainly can't fault you if you're selling right now and taking these these profits and, and calling it a day so that's our picks for the hot list but we have a bonus hot pick this week coming from aka mr bolo himself Yes, I could not let us go through this hot and cold show without talking about Bloodshot. Because if you have been paying attention to anything this week, I'm sure you know that the Bloodshot trailer has debuted on YouTube. And it has gotten some pretty rave reviews. Uh, I was at the convention, Baltimore Comic Con, like we've talked about. And on Sunday, uh, the Valiant booth was showing dealers and media guests and then, uh, anybody kind of with that kind of credential the trailer, and as soon as I saw this trailer, I couldn't really hear the audio, but just the visuals alone, I knew that this was going to be a smash. Um, this has been something that the people behind this movie have been talking about for a long time. I then went and did some digging, and it was funny listening to the buzz that was going around the convention. I saw people walking up to booths asking for Rise Zero and Eternal Warrior number four. I saw dealers raising prices. I saw dealers scrambling to try to figure out what they even should price these books at, knowing that there was going to be an anticipated spike the next day. This is real buzz, real organic buzz. And it was really kind of cool to see it happening in real time like that. Um, today, we've seen, you know, now we're a few days past that point. We've seen books doubling in price. We've seen slabs flying off of eBay. But even more than that, we've seen almost everything Bloodshot doing well. Variants are on the rise. Comic Man Andy mentioned that Carbon Fiber variant. We've seen even that book raise over 10 to 15% more than it was selling for last week. We've seen uh, Bloodshot number one, which is one of the most overprinted books in the history of comics, is going from 50 cent bin fodder to now suddenly going for like $5 plus shipping. Um, it's amazing to see. 
And here's the thing to remember when we're looking at that trailer. Some of the naysayers are talking about, well, Bloodshot doesn't have the white skin or we don't see the red dot. It's important to remember that that trailer really takes place in the beginning part of the movie, which is what happens in a lot of movie trailers. They're not giving away the story. McFarlane Toys has already released prototypes that were at New York Comic Con for the action figure line, which do show Vin Diesel with the white skin and the red dot. I would expect to see that. So you valiant purists, be cautious. It's coming. Um, either way, it's good to see valiant comics be in the in the news and being talked about the way that it is. There were a lot of people who doubted we'd ever get to this point, but it is here. February, we are getting a Valiant movie, and it looks to be um, one that can compete in the marketplace. So I'm excited for that, and these these sales are real. You can go on eBay and check those uh, check those completed auctions. Just type Bloodshot in in your comics category, and you're going to see a litany of Bloodshot sales. So it's time if you're, if you're in a sleepy town and, and maybe they're not paying attention to those price spikes, it's time to grab some of those uh, key books and hot variants and low-printed books out of those back-issue bins. But that, that's going to bring us to the close on the hot list, but we're going to roll right now into the cold picks, starting with Mike Morello. Hey, everybody. Mike Morello here again from CBSI's Cover Tunes with my cold pick. And this week's cold pick is a little bit of a strange and complex one. So I'm going to try to keep it as brief as I possibly can. Um, and it is UK Pence price variants. Um, I don't understand why these are cold, but they, they are cold. They have no legs for whatever reason at the moment, um, which I can't really understand considering how much the prices on 30 and 35 cent variants in the United States have popped. I mean, premiums on those books are huge in comparison. Um, we've obviously seen a lot of them. Uh, when it comes to things like the Marvel Spotlight Moon Knights and the Eternals books. Obviously, there's the Star Wars 35-cent variant, which is very famous, and um, you have your first Sabretooth price variant as well. Um, but for whatever reason, the Pence variants uh, during the similar years just don't have the same legs. And I don't understand it, considering they are as rare or possibly even rarer than those United States 30 and 35-cent variants from 1977 and 1978. Um, now, keep in mind that these were published as far back as the 1960s for Marvel. Um, Marvel was producing them uh, all the way back to Fantastic Four number one. Um, and then in 1970-71, DC kind of kicked in, and they started to do them as well. Both companies ceased to do them in 1981 when uh, they started to do the dual prices on the covers. And then the sort of the variants weren't necessary anymore. Um, but they're really rare. Um, and there are a couple of reasons why. The first reason to keep in mind is that the UK population was only about a quarter of the United States during those years. Um, roughly 50 million in the UK versus 200 plus million in the United States during that time. Additionally, readership in the United, uh, United Kingdom was much lower, um, which trickles down to about 5% of the print runs of the books were the UK Pence price variants. Now. Not only is that really low, but how many of those are surviving today? Two, three percent of those? And then how many of those are uh, surviving in high grade? One percent, maybe? Um, keep in mind, these books were shipped overseas and probably didn't survive the shipping nearly as well as, say, shipping across state lines. Um, so that's yet another reason why they might be rarer. Another reason why they're a little bit more scarce is because there's only one version of them. There aren't newsstands and directs like there were in the United States and in Canada at the time. Additionally, um, only about half of the issues that were produced during those years exist with Pence variants. During those years, there were somewhere in the vicinity of six to 7,000 issues produced by Marvel, as, as an example, and only about 3,000 of those have Pence variants. Likewise, for DC, only about 800 Pence variants exist. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why these are rarer. They're really tough to get, especially here in the United States. They may be a little easier to find if you're overseas, but here they're really tough to find, and in high grade they're even harder to find. Um, as far as printing them goes, they were all printed here in the United States, that's important to understand. There is nothing to indicate that the UK versions were printed prior to the United States versions. They may have alternated them back and forth. The Pence ones may have been printed first. The United States ones may have been printed first. There's a lot of people in the school of thought that says that the Pence versions would have been created first so that they could ship them in time for release on similar days. 
that makes sense, but there isn't any evidence to suggest that that's true. Um, but either way, we're talking about some, some real rarities here. Um, what you're looking for, of course, is um, in the early years, in the 1960s, you're looking for uh, the, the early version of what the pence sort of looked like. Remember that the UK was on a 240 pence per pound system all the way up until 1971, at which point they changed over to the 100 pence per pound system. Um, so in the 60s, you're looking for 9D prices, 10D prices um, from the early to mid 60s. And then in the late 60s, you're looking for the one shilling, which is 12 pence at the time. Um, and so because one pence equaled one shilling and there were 20 shillings per pound at the time. And then in 1971, when they changed over to the new system, you're looking for things like six pence, eight pence, nine pence and 10 pence, which are the two most common. You have the 12 pence. And then of course you have the 15 pence towards the end in 1981 when both companies stopped producing them. Um, so you know, keep a, keep a lookout for all those different types of prices. They may look a little strange with the D's and the P's and the, and the dashes and all those kinds of things on there, but when they do pop up, um, if they're in good shape, I would say grab them. Um, I would suggest if you like this kind of thing, um, and this is your, your sort of uh, hobby niche, then pick the series that you want to collect Go try to grab as many of these as you can online or, uh, or via your shops if you, if you think they might have them in stock. And grab them now before they pop like the 30 and 35 cent variants do. Um, I think now is the time while they're cold before they have legs because I think they will eventually catch up to the 30 and 35 cent variants. So that's my cold pick for the week. Sorry it was so lengthy, but there's a lot of information. Um, I hope you have a good one. Thanks, everybody. So here we have Mike talking about those British Pence variants. To me, they're cold. But that's only because I'm completely ignorant on these. Don't have too much knowledge on these variants. I've seen them around sometimes, but I've never been one to pick them up. They never appealed to me. So I guess they've always been cold. But what do you think about it? What do you think about this, Jack? Well, I think it's one of those things, Brian. It's kind of like these categories of variants, whether we're talking, you know, Mark the Jewelers or Newsstand variants or Pence variants. Um, we see them rise in popularity as they're kind of discussed in the public. And then when they're not discussed, we kind of see them kind of drop back, um, you know, and I don't know how kind of rare Pence variants are. I think my man, uh, Simon, uh, would have to be the one to kind of let us know, you know, how prevalent are they? You know, are these books that he finds when he's digging over in the UK on a regular basis? Um, are they just kind of rare to us on this side of the pond? But, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, those or the DCU variants or any of the other variants that I've mentioned, um, they kind of come into fashion and out of fashion. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't really paid attention to it, but I, I definitely take Mike's word for it that it, they're cold at the moment, could present a buying opportunity, which is what's great about the cold part of this uh, list. Right. And next on the cold list, we're going to see what Carolina Chris 26 has for us. Did you eat my cupcakes in the kitchen? The what? My cupcakes. Nah, I ain't eat no cupcakes. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't seen no cupcakes in the kitchen. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Carolina Chris26 back at you again this week with my cold pick. Obviously, I had to just ditch some evidence. All right, guys, I want to talk about a cold pick, and this is, I feel like this might be a good cold pick because it is actually really a cold pick. I mean, I have yet to find or sell a hot one of these books that I want to call for my pick this week. And basically, that is a Frank Cho Harley Quinn cover. Um, I've got a couple signed, uh, Frank Cho books, uh, Harley Quinn 9.8, uh, issue 24. Um, I've got the connecting size for that book, uh, 25, 9.6, signed by Frank Cho. Um, I even got a Harley Loves Joker number one signed by Frank Cho. Um, and it's like, honestly... 
It's like no Harley Quinn Frank Cho covers seem to sell for a lot of money. Not compared to the um, Tedesco uh, cover that recently sold a nice little bit of money when it came out. Or um, the Delato or the Matina or the Warren Lou covers. I mean, Frank Cho 9.8 graded or not, they're not a hot... Book and I'm not saying Frank Cho is, is is a lame artist. He's a good artist, but I don't know, bro. It's, none of his books seem to ever heat up. I don't I don't know what it is. Harley Quinn is is a pretty iconic character, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Some people don't like her. Some people do. She was actually my reason for getting into comics. So I've always loved Harley. Uh, I love Margaret Robbie. You know, playing Harley. That just you know that's ideal. You know, I think she was meant to play that character, but. Like, um, Delato CGC covers, I mean, they've sold for 300 249 uh, 89 and 150 you know, they've, they've did pretty good numbers. Um, Matina covers, uh, 138 uh, 90 115 bucks. But the Batman Adventures number 12, Harley's, um, uh, first appearance, it always sells, it's, it's usually, you know, seven 800 you know, less or more, but it, her first appearance seems to do good. But Frank Cho CGC uh, 9.8 sell uh, 40, 50 bucks. You know what I mean? At the most. And I mean, think about what you, you pay for you to get it graded. And if you got to get pressed. You know what I'm saying? You're not making any money off of it. And with his signature, don't seem to bring any much value to it. Amanda Connor's got a few covers that might do a little bit better than Frank Cho. But Frank Cho Harley Quinn covers, I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if he has a cover out there that's actually did any money worth bragging about guys so it kind of bums me out because I'm, I'm kind of a Harley Quinn Frank fan but it definitely seems to be a cold pick and I, I don't I don't think it'll heat up so I don't know if there's a, a silver lining to this this tale here but anyways guys yeah Frank Cho Harley Quinn covers now if there's one out there that sold for a substantial amount of money I don't know it but I don't know everything you know what I'm saying so if I'm wrong, guys, tell me I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah. Harley Quinn, Frank Cho covers. Cold pick. Guys, take care. And I hope everybody had a great and happy new comic book day. Peace. Frank Cho Harley covers. I totally agree. They are cold, but... I think that also falls in lines with DC cover bees in general right now. Um, I personally like the Frank Cho Harley, the seasonal covers that he does each season with the winter, the fall, the spring, with the, the dotted variants. But now I'm not even talking about Frank Cho. Look at the Bill Sienkiewicz covers that he was doing before Frank, when Frank Cho was doing Wonder Woman cover B. Originally Rebirth, Bill Sienkiewicz was doing the covers. Those aren't selling either. So it's... It's just those B covers in general, especially with Harley. I think there's just kind of some burnout. But we always talk about it. You never know. Those might do good as a set down the road. Either way, what do you think, Jack? First off, I got to say, Carolina Chris always brings the entertainment value to the hot and cold shows. Shout out to him. But, you know, first off, it's, usually me. it's also me usually uh, stealing your thunder. You stole that one from right from me. Uh, those DC cover Bs. <laughs> Are just uh, you know they're as cold as can be. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. But I, I also want to point out something else. If this allows me to pivot, I would also say that the Harley Quinn series is just cold. Um, and you mentioned you know the Bill Sienkiewicz covers also being cold. I think the writing on that series is not what fans want from Harley Quinn. Take you back to the Bolo show a couple weeks ago. We talked about Harleen being a, a long term play of the week. Look at what that book is selling for. That book's selling for over $20. That is the Harley Quinn that comic collectors and readers want. That mature, kind of adult-oriented Harley Quinn. Not this kind of goofy, Deadpool-ish version of Harley Quinn that we get in the Rebirth line. And I think that has a lot to do with it as well. As well as, like you said, DC cover bees being cold, um, very easily accessible, and kind of like all over the market. Right. So thanks for that pick, Chris. We're going to roll right into the next cold pick, which comes from Adam from Strange Tales to Collect. Hey, everyone. Adam here with Strange Tales to Collect, and I'm here to bring you my cold pick for this week. And my cold pick for this week is Adam Warlock Spec. Um, 
for a while now, price has been going down, sales have been slowing, and a lot of that's because of the whole fiasco with James Gunn getting fired from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, we saw the cocoon at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, um, <clears throat> but it kind of left at a cliffhanger, and it kind of just just left it there. So all that heat, everything going on um, from when we first saw that's gone away now uh, because it's just been so long. Everybody's attention's on everything else. Everybody's focused on Phase 4. Um, and like I said, everything with, that happened with James Gunn and everything like that um, really slowed all that down, um, stopped the prices from going up. They've come down a bit now. <clears throat> Sales are going down. People are ready to make deals. Uh, but I will say, go ahead, start picking these up now before they bring Adam Warlock in or they start uh, talking about him more and more, and then you see prices for him going up. Um, another big thing, too, is everybody's kind of a little confused on what um, to pick up for him. If, if, you know, you get the cocoon in Fantastic Four series, if you get him in his first appearance as him in Thor, or if you um, go ahead and pick up the first appearance of him as Adam Warlock, I think that adds a little bit to the confusion. It broadens the spectrum. People aren't really 100% on what to get. So, um, cold pick isn't necessarily a bad investment. Go ahead and start picking those up now while prices are low. People are ready to make deals and before Adam Warlock comes in. So, my cold pick, Adam Warlock. So, Adam Warlock definitely was super hot a while ago. Prices have come down a bit. I think it's a good cold pick. And I think it's one of those ones we always talk about perfect buying opportunities. Some of those books he mentioned, they aren't super cheap, but the prices are on decline. So now's a good time to pick them up before they escalate again. Because there's no doubt we're going to see them. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, as my man hashtag handsome Adam pointed out, I think the biggest thing is James Gunn. The fact that James Gunn is doing Suicide Squad 2 right now delays Guardians of the Galaxy. And that delay is what's causing what we always talk about with this like cyclical nature of the kind of like movie release schedule. So while everyone is waiting on that movie, we're not getting Guardians of the Galaxy news. We're getting all this news about other books and other movies. All of those books are spiking and people have kind of faded back off of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy spec. And all of those books related to Guardians of the Galaxy are kind of seeing a dip and decline. Um, and it, all it's going to take is more news driven towards Adam Warlock and that movie. Another point that I'll make is there's a lot of Adam Warlock keys, right? People argue about what is the book. Is it the Cocoon issue? Is it the Marvel team-up issue? Is it that, you know... Um, uh, the Marvel Tales book uh, is it the is it the Adam Warlock one book? What's what's the book to get? And all of that ends up playing into it as well. But I think these books are going to see their day. It's a good point that he made to to pay attention to them now while they're cold. Right. Also, make sure you guys check out Adam on his YouTube channel, Strange Tales Collect. But we're going to roll right into the next and final cold pick this week, which comes from. Comic Man Andy. Oh, what's up, comic family? It's comic Man Andy, and I'm back. I'm back with my cold pick. Yeah. Die from Image. Surprisingly, that's my cold pick this week. Yeah, I've been reading the book this entire time, and uh, but I didn't pay attention to the market the last uh, month or so, or two months even, probably. And when I went back to take a look to see what was going on, I was kind of surprised. Um... Sales seem really slow and quiet. Um, prices do seem pretty low as well when you start looking on eBay and a lot of the other websites. You know, I feel like we're seeing a trifecta of things here. One, reader buzz is definitely dying out. I've even heard some people in the YouTube community say that they're potentially looking at dropping this book from their poll list because the last two issues were slow, pretty slow. Um and uh, news. There hasn't been much of anything in the way of news since the option news. So that kind of slows it down, too. And, and, you know, the series has been around for almost a year now. So you've got the spec side of things, like the spec cycle, playing a role here, too. So those th three things combined kind of make for a slow series. Um, slow on the numbers. A little slow in the story at the moment. Um, but I don't see a lot of stuff come into market for sale, which tells me to believe, it makes me believe, sorry, uh, that people still have faith in this series. Um, they don't want to give it up. They love it or they're holding on to the books for the long haul. Um, and when you look at numbers, um, the nine eights in the series are selling for below $100, 
Well, you know, if you can get a 9.8 for almost the cost of what it takes to send it and slab it and get it back, yeah, the, there's no real profit margin if you're selling these books as a business. So that's a cold book. Um, I really like the series. I'm going to stick with it because I love reading it. But if die is your thing and you're still missing issues and you still want some 9.8s, pay attention uh, to the market because you could find some really good buying opportunities this fall. So that's my cold pick for the week, guys. I'm going to go piggies out. I'm go peace out. Catch you guys next week for uh, the next episode. Have a great weekend, y'all. Jack, this is a book that surprises me, but doesn't surprise me to see it on the cold list. For the longest time, everyone, we even talked about it so much on this channel, Die is Hot. Die is a great story. Die with reader buzz. And then there was the rumor of the specul... Uh, then there was rumor of the book being optioned. But now we're starting to see this book decline a little bit. I think it's also another one that brings up good buying opportunity. I personally love this just for the reading enjoyment of it alone. Fantastic story. If you guys haven't been reading it, highly recommend you do. But what do you think, Jack? Yeah, to me, this is just spec cycle. Um, we've seen some announcements come within the last several weeks of several different independent comics from, you know, Gideon Falls and Bitterroot and Monstrous and so on and so forth that have kind of captivated the attention of that buying community. Um, it's hard when you're buying books to like continue to buy when there's no news and you don't know what's going on people tend to shy away from that but that's actually a time when you should be buying so while once nine eights were hitting that 150 to 200 dollar range we're now seeing them sit in that kind of like 70 to 85 range which is colder than it was but it's kind of like i've talked about in previous weeks it's colder than it was but you still got to look at it and go if you bought these books at cover price you can still make a great profit selling right now i wouldn't advocate doing it because i think that these books are going to come back but um definitely colder than it was definitely not selling as many copies as it was but that's why like i'm not selling mine they're in my they're in my short box i'll hold and wait for a more opportune time that brings up a question um so we all know what the benchmark book is which is of course walking dead right and then we always constantly hear all these image books getting titled. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any of these titles that have held their value like Walking Dead did. Or how many of them got optioned and actually made into a successful running show. Right. As far as a successful running show, you really haven't seen that. Um, as far as holding value, I'd say Saga is another one. But other than... Other than really Saga and Walking Dead, you haven't you haven't seen it. Um, and Saga's more for that classic reader buzz. At least Deadly Class got made, and it was actually a decent show. Yeah, really good show. I really enjoyed that show. It's unfortunate. It's sci-fi. I have no faith in that channel. Yeah. So, yeah, you always get the buzz behind image books. Then they ultimately kind of fall flat, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, maybe maybe a company that maybe investors want to stop putting so much money behind uh, as, you know, it's kind of been a tough a tough investment long term. Yeah. So, yeah, and we anxious to see how, because um, Amazon has that deal with Kirkman and Skybound books, right? Yep. So, stuff's coming down. We just got to see how the chips fall. Yeah, and I have faith with uh, Ryan Coogler and Bitter, Bitter Root. I have faith with Dinesh Shamdasani and Gideon Falls. We're just going to have to kind of wait and see. It's, there's still going to be time before these releases come out. It's like panning for gold. It really is. <laughs> you know you have all these image books and you just see what shakes out and gives you the big gold chunk. Yep. But thanks, Andy, for that pick. And that is going to bring us to the hot and cold list this week. We're going to bring it up on the screen here. So, Jack, real quick, recapping the list. For hot this week, we have Fantastic Four. We have 90s Spider-Man. We have 90s comic book gimmicks. We also have Monstrous, Wolverine, Shriek, and then, of course, your bonus pick with Bloodshot. And then on the cold side, we have those British Pence variants, Frank Cho, Harley variants, Adam Warlock, and then rounding it up, we have Image Comics Die series. What do you think about the list this week, Jack? I like this list, and I'll tell you why, Brian. It is an example of why this show exists, right? We have a diverse group of pickers, and they're picking a diverse group of topics. We've got a cover artist. We have a character. 
we have a type of variant, we have a kind of category of cover style, we have an era of a specific titles books, um, we have a little bit of everything, and that is what makes the Hot and Cold show unique and special. Right. So, before we let you go, we do have a couple announcements to make, specifically about this show in general. This show will be moving to a monthly show, so we're going to have this towards the end of each month now instead of a weekly show. Gives our pickers a little bit of a rest between their picks, and also gives us an opportunity to create two additional pieces of content. Isn't that right, Jack? Yeah, we're not going to take anything away from you. We're actually going to give you a little bit more. Brian and I have had some ideas we've been working on, some things we've been cooking up, and we wanted to be able to bring them to you, and we felt like the best way to do that was to kind of shift around the schedule, and that is what we are doing now. Right. So the first of that is going to be similar to the hot and cold, except it's going to be three hot, three cold picks. We are calling this series Three Up, Three Down. Jack and I ourselves each week are going to give you those picks and we've listened to the Simple Man's Comics community. That video will be much shorter in length. We're going to aim to keep that between about 15 minutes or so. This show runs a little bit longer. That's why we're moving it to monthly. But we have one more piece of content. What's that going to be, Jack? Coming to you by popular demand from the Simple Man's Comics family and Bolo Nation, we are going to bring the back issue Bolo show to the Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel. The Back Issue Bolo Show is going to be an exciting top five list of back issues. And sometimes it will be market-wise. Sometimes it will be category-specific. It will come different each week, and we are excited to bring that to you from myself and Brian. Right. So be on the lookout for those two pieces of content. And then again, this show will be moving to monthly. And remember, tomorrow night we're coming back with a brand new episode of The Bolo Show. That's right, we'll be talking about the hottest new comic book day books that you are buzzing about on social media, uh, and we're going to discuss what's going up, what's going down in the issues, and what are the hottest books of the day. Then we're going to wrap up the week with The Last Call. That's one of our favorite shows to do. We're going to discuss our top 10 picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. That's right. That's the pre-FOC show, and you don't have to pay $10 on Patreon to get it. It's right here for you free. Exactly. So with that being said, thank you guys. Appreciate everyone in the chat. Click that thumbs up button for us, and we'll see you guys tomorrow night.